Oh my god, how quickly things can change. We were just with them like 20 minutes ago. They don't even know what to think. We just got to the northern part of Argentina last night. We stayed here because it's just such a unique landscape, honestly. It feels like last 600 kilometers we drove, we drove through like five different countries. It's crazy. And this honestly looks like we're somewhere in like Mexico slash Arizona or something. If it wouldn't be so cold, we would be jumping to this really cool swimming hole right now. such a terrible sleep last night I don't know if it's the full moon or it's because I discovered we have yet another problem with the van it was only two days ago where we were in the mechanic last time fixing that drive shaft seal I've just discovered while checking if that seal is leaking again that I found another leak on the axial seal which is something we actually replaced in Santiago very annoying that we have to go now and get that replaced again it just kind of brings you down makes you feel kind of crap that we just have so many problems that we just always are nervous that we're going to have another problem and it really just makes you anxious and i didn't really get a very good sleep because of it so try not to think about it and just try to stay positive so my thought for why these things keep blowing is the breather for the differential was blocked but it isn't blocked there is a hole in there so I really don't know why the two seals have just gone at the same time. Maybe it was coincidence, but it seems like there is an underlying issue that we have to face and fix. <laughs> what did you do? I accidentally brought yogurt with the spoon and now Marshall is forcing me. Well, you gotta get it. You no, can't just I, throw the spoon away. No, it's all the way in the bottom. I heard it to like go. Well, take some stuff out. No. You can't kind of just throw the spoon away. Well, it's okay. I'll buy a new one. You can't buy a single spoon from a set. We have spoons, we don't really use them. Much. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So that was interesting. <laughs> we were just making lunch out the front of uh, this big Jesus statue here, and we had a professional uh, Argentinian singer come over and check the van out and then just show us her music. <laughs> It's nice meeting the locals, I suppose. We are on our way to Salta, taking the very dirt road scenic route. And oh my God, we have just stumbled across the most picturesque scenic landscape we have ever seen. I mean, this is unreal. It's like Garden of Eden. Ben is in the hot seat because I'm doing some filming on the drone. Oh my God, I just can't stop taking photos of this place. It's so amazing. So we are on our way to Salta now to firstly get the car fixed again, secondly to see the sights. We're passing through the National Park of Los Cordones now and it is just the most amazing scenery. We just went through a valley of just pure cacti and we're at over 3,000 meters above sea level here. There's a 6,000 meter mountain behind us, which is crazy. And it's just an arid desert with nothing here but cacti. It's so unreal. So this is probably the highest any of us have actually been in altitude, not in a plane. And we're definitely feeling like it's a little bit harder to breathe up here. We're nearly 3,500 meters over this pass. You can tell the car is struggling a little bit more. I don't know, I feel like it's just harder to walk around and do basic functions. It's mm. actually quite crazy. We are not altitude sickness yet, but uh, let's hopefully that doesn't happen. Let's hopefully that doesn't happen. Welcome to Salta. And unfortunately the first step we actually are doing here today is visiting 
a mechanic consultant to get the car checked. That's not good. So we are taking apart the axle now to find out why the seals have blown over only a couple of months. We're not exactly sure. It could have been the way it was installed the first time, but giving it a good look, repair it and hopefully be on our way. It really feels like we're doing a tour of South American mechanical workshops at the moment. <laughs> oh, we've been here all day but they're doing a great job fixing our car. These guys are actually really helpful. So it's been a very long day. I've been working eight hours plus from gas station, eight muscles running around, getting new parts. I feel pretty stinky, sweaty, and just like gross, very tired. Van's supposed to be ready now, so it's great. It's 8.30 p.m. Uh, so these guys are like gold, but they actually fixed everything. Now we're getting a bail. That's the worst part and yeah, hopefully find a campsite, have a hot shower and go to sleep. That's all we want right now. And we are leaving our, I don't know how many mechanics now that we've actually been to on the street. I tell every single one of the mechanics that we all really appreciate. Hopefully we never meet you again. No offense. <laughs> We were driving whole day and we got to the very top of Argentina and there's this really cool rainbow mountains. Basically a cheaper, much less known version of the rainbow mountains in Peru. These ones are called 14 Cald Mountains. We are driving on this horrible dirt road. Mas is doing a great job. We're taking really slow because this is the exact type of road that will uh, break our van again. But we're trying to get there on sunset. And fun fact, the place where we're gonna camp is actually on the side of the road in the high altitude. And everyone warned us, get ready for like storms and high altitude, like it can be freezing cold. And also, of course, you can have difficulties with briefing and we've never been so high up in the mountains and with vehicle and sleeping there. So we're like really excited and kind of like curious and a little bit nervous how it's gonna feel and, and just there, yeah, what to do, how to prepare. Yeah, we didn't stop off in town and get any cocoa leaves to chew on <laughs> because you can actually buy them now while we're in the mountains. I think everyone chews on the cocoa leaves and it's like a sedative or something that, that helps you with the altitude sickness. And we don't know if we're getting get altitude sickness yet. It's, I think it's a little bit of a hit and miss. Everyone's different. So I guess we'll see. <laughs> Where we thought we were going to sleep tonight was about 3,500. And we just right decided now. to keep driving because we couldn't see anything. And now we're at 4,400 meters or something. Look at these guys. <laughs> 4,330 altitude and look, oh my God. Crazy because the van has like no power at this. I can basically only drive in first and second. Such a lack of oxygen, I suppose, at this altitude. Wow. It'll be interesting for sleeping, I suppose. It is actually unreal and also it's pretty hard to breathe it's actually a little bit difficult wow we made it just <laughs> the road was terrible dirt road and when that happens it takes us literally twice or three times as long as google tells us to and we're here by ourselves yeah and it's a deafening silence there is nothing wow it is already very cold we left the bottom of the hill where the town was and it was 21 degrees it's very cold up here i'm thinking it's like maybe five or six degrees mm -hmm. and it's probably going to get really cold tonight cooking pasta has never been harder cooking at 4300 meters it i feel like i've been just like on really really difficult hike and i just like cannot catch breath it's I can really feel 
I'm a little bit dizzy, like kind of like having a little bit of brain fog. Definitely feel the altitude. Yeah, let's see how we're gonna be able to sleep. I'm much the same and I'm sitting down. I feel like I've just ran like a five kilometer jog and I'm exhausted, I just can't do anything. I'm not physically ill like I've heard some people get with altitude, feeling really lethargic and tired. We've heard that sleeping at altitude can also kind of mess with your sleep, make it a little bit harder. So let's hope that doesn't happen. Wow, not feeling so well. I think the solution is always just to head down the hill if we start to feel bad, but let's just wait it out and see how we feel. I don't think it's gonna get much worse. The oxygen obviously is a lot thinner up here, but We'll see how it goes. If it gets bad, we'll just head back down. So this has not gone to plan. It's now 1am and none of us can sleep. I've been sitting here for like the last four hours trying to sleep and our heart rate is just too high. It's very weird. It's hard to explain, but we decided that we're going to drive down the hill another 500 meters in elevation to see if it's going to be any easier on us because it's still going to be 3,800 meters, but hopefully it'll allow us to get some sleep because up here we just can't. So I'm not feeling too bad, hence why I'm still driving. Benny on my other hand is not doing so well, so she's still in the bed. You feeling any better that we've come down now? Yeah, I think my heartbeat is like better and I don't have the pressure in my head. It's still pretty bad. The headache, I feel like crying now. One of the worst nights I think I've ever had on this trip. So this was not what we expected. Well, we had kind of no expectations, but definitely not prepared. <laughs> so we've come back up to the top again this morning to get another look what it looks like during the day. It's still really hard to breathe, but we're just not moving. So there was this really lovely older couple and they obviously saw that we were struggling because we were kind of like <laughs> just walking around. And she came to us with this plastic bag and was full of leaves. Coca leaves. She told us in Spanish that you should just take it like, put it aside of, of your teeth, but do not chew it. And just like the saliva of the coca leaves to just do its magic and it will adjust your organism to high attitude and you will not have headache and stuff. Well, I wish that we would have had the leaves last night, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's see. We're going to be going to look for some coca leaves because <laughs> yeah. we are going into Bolivia and it's going to be much higher altitude probably for much longer so we're probably going to be accustomed to chewing coca leaves very soon. The last couple of days we've been hanging out and became friends with a Dutch couple and we were just with them about 20 minutes ago. I had to jump start their battery because their battery just died and they're heading towards the Bolivian border with us but we had some admin to do still in this town he just sent me a message saying you will not believe what just happened. He said a car had hit him and their car is actually on its side now on the side of the road. So we're rushing to them to help. We're just getting some fuel. But I mean, oh my God, how quickly things can change. We were just with them like 20 minutes ago. They said they're not hurt, but oh my God, I don't even know what to think. We'll see when we get there. That's crazy. Thank you so much, guys. I'm sorry uh, for ruining your No! <laughs> Fuck. These guys said that they slowed down because alarmas were crossing the road and then the car behind them rear-ended them. How quickly your day changes. Vendi is going to drive with Edith in the ambulance to the hospital because she's got a bit of a sore neck. And I'm going to stay with Christopher and you know, secure the car, make sure everything gets back. Um, I don't know, they're gonna flip the car, I suppose, and put all their stuff in our car. And I feel so horrible for these guys. It's like they were on the same journey as us. We just met them about a week ago on a wine tour in Mendoza. And we were traveling with them for a couple of days and they were going to Bolivia as well. So, so were we, yeah, it's, it really sucks. We've packed all their stuff into our van and in the back. Edith's gone to the hospital with Vendi and they're doing an x-ray on her now so to make sure that her neck is all right because she did get a bit of whiplash. Chris and I are trying to figure out what to do with the car because we don't want to leave the rooftop tent on the side of the road in case someone decides that they want it more than we do. So we're trying to organize a tow truck but it is extremely difficult. <coughs> See on Solo? See? Solo. Solo. Right. Oh, I'm so sorry for it. No, no problem. <laughs> Very small dinner party here. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for Chris at the police station. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> We've got dinner for him, though. You just have to wait. <laughs> Yesterday was such a crazy day. We were driving around all night, back and forth from the police station to the hospital, actually chauffeuring the police officers in the front and in the back, which was quite funny. At one point, we had six people in the car with only three seats, so the girls were sitting on the bed. We got back to the town at around about 1 a.m. and just absolutely died because we didn't have any sleep from last night either at that altitude that we tried to sleep at. We got the guys into an accommodation. All their stuff is in their room and now we're just trying to figure out the next steps for them there. We are moving out. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to have you longer. <laughs> Today is another exciting day. It is a border crossing day, so we are a little bit nervous, but we are going to be going into a new country. We are in the little town called La Quica, which is the border town between Argentina and Bolivia, and we are just dropping off our Dutch friends here. This is where their car got towed to the other night when they had the accident, and we've been transporting them and all their stuff in the back. They've got a hostel here, so once we kind of unpack their stuff, have some lunch, I think we'll say goodbye and try head across the border. Just wanted to make sure they were set up before we left. Hey, hopefully this border crossing is going to be simple. We've heard it can either be between one hour or six hours depending on the day. So really hoping it's not going to go that long. But when we get onto the other side, we've got to get fully set up again for another country. That means new money, new SIM cards and all the stuff that comes with entering a new country. So it's going to be a long day, I think, but uh, it's going to be exciting. Just looking for a way to border crossing and... So this is the border here, so the big fences. So the other side of this river is Bolivia. And this is also how can you do a uh, border crossing. This is the fast border crossing apparently. We're going through the slow way. <laughs> Bolivia, here we come. One of the most confusing, disorientating border crossings we've done. But we are in Bolivia now. We had our car fumigated, and now car, we car, chip, have chip. to find some chips, a SIM card, and we also need to get some money. Out. day in Bolivia and already we can tell that the climate here is so different. I think most of the country is above 3,000 meters which means we have really cold nights, really really hot days. This morning was minus three and it feels like it's about 30 degrees right now in the sun with absolutely zero shade. We are in this really cool little town called Tapiza and walking through the Inca Canyon and it is so spectacular. So just this simple walk, it's pretty flat up the canyon, is really taking it out of us because of the altitude. We just feel so exhausted just from doing the most basic hiking. It's crazy. Just walking up and down a couple of stairs, it's like... <sighs> also might be because we unfit now, but I'm pretty sure it's because of the altitude. We were just going up and up. We climb up over 1,000 meters. It's actually 4,200 and we learn from our experience so I prepared myself a tea from coca leaves. So we're trying to prevent myself from uh, high altitude sickness as it seems that I'm more sensitive to it. Myself's feeling fine. Definitely feel a little bit of the pressure in head, a little bit headache, uh, but it's not too bad. And we're just going through this pass and we'll be going down again. have made it to the salt flat town of Uni. That was a long four hour drive in 4,000 meter high altitude mountain. So we weren't feeling too good after it, but just visited the iconic train graveyard and got some amazing shots at sunset. So cool, there's no one here. And we're thinking about going on the solar flats tomorrow with the van. <laughs> We've heard conflicting stories if it's a good idea to go with your own van or not because obviously it's salt and it's not going to do good for your car and also you may need a four-wheel drive in some areas and we do not have that. Minus seven it's going to be at night 
in the next couple of days. We've yeah. unpacked our sleeping bags in preparation because we know it's going to be a cold night. Follow us next time for where we explore the world's largest salt flat, meet some of South America's cutest animals, and go underground at the world's deadliest mine. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Welcome to Potosi, my friends. Welcome to Potosi! <sighs> <laughs>